This is Shin, and this boy contains the strongest power in all of anime, but his mom had to seal most of his powers away when he was young. Now he's on a journey to reclaim all power and energy that belongs to him. Unfortunately, girls keep getting in the way. One of them is Pinky, and upon physical contact with each other, Shin's hand starts glowing hinting that she could be one of the seven lucky girls with his powers. After getting close to her again, he confirms it wasn't a fluke as his hands begin to glow with her nearby so she must be the chosen girl number two. With him luckily finding number two by accident, he runs to hide it from her and proceeds to call his wizards from Waverly Place Mother to alert her of the sudden discovery. Upon further investigation, he discovers her name to be Yan Jiwan, and apparently his mom knows her dad as she's the only daughter of the man that owns the only hardware store in town. Hopefully the dad isn't a multi-talented man as the only famous hardware people these moms know is Johnny from The Hub. Regardless, his mom confirms that she did indeed give away the smallest portion of his energy to her when she was young to save her from embarrassment, so it's time for him to reclaim his destiny. However, as he watches from afar, he realizes Pinky loves to be super clumsy, especially since she keeps ending up in super compromising positions. With Shin almost being swayed by her poses, he ends up snapping back to reality when his hand glows again, only to realize he needs to figure out the original source of his glowing mark. So now he needs to figure out what part fits perfectly with his glowing mark on his hand as there should be a matching side from Juwan, causing our boy to start daydreaming once again. Now since our boy is still a soy boy without his powers, he's quick to use his brain to go overdrive in his sussy back of fantasies. Unfortunately, that isn't the real world so he swiftly attempts to raise his IQ levels over level 9000, allowing him to realize that the posterior maximus must be the key to everything. And so he plans his method of attack carefully in his big brain, as he thinks he can just walk up to her and conquer like he has the power to stop time. But then he realizes he's just a weak sussy baka and not capable of doing anything bad as he's actually a really good boy so he sits there frustrated trying to figure out alternative paths. After a few more moments of deliberate thinking, Shin comes up with his final approach, and decides to land on airway twin dragons instead of the posterior maximus. But of course, Shin is all talk and no game, which is a good thing as he isn't that down bad compared to some people I've seen on the internet. With both his hands now glowing, he realizes he's in deep trouble as there's no way he can do anything to figure out a solution, as he can't just randomly go up to her and activate the power of touch. Honestly though, why don't Shin just ask for an examination if you guys know what I mean, wink wink. Anyways, Juwon is a workaholic so she literally spends all her time at work and now she has no extra clothes to change into after pulling off another 24-hour shift. Unluckily for her, Juwon's only downtime for the next 16 hours gets interrupted as it's already time for the next patient to walk in. And lo and behold, the next patient is the heart throb sensation Shin, but it looks like he has a massive headache when sitting down. With Juwon unable to figure out what's actually wrong with Shin as all his results come back perfectly fine, she feels uneasy as this is the first case she has not instantly figured out what the culprit could be. Upon realizing that Shin now also has a headache, she quickly gets up super worried about him as it could be a case of simp overload. Suddenly, Juwon decides to take the detour down Sussy Street as she straight up asks if Shin has any problems erecting his banana tree plantation. Taken by surprise, our boy instantly gets flustered and instinctively reacts by covering up his battering ram. Jiwon then reveals to him that if he had trouble setting off a rocket ship, then his headache is related to the meds they recently given him, but he's totally fine in that department. As such, it turns out that my earlier request is about to come true without our boy even asking for it. Almost as if he's lucky enough to win the lottery with how things are going. With Juwon getting ready to do another examination to make sure things are perfectly fine, Shin gets another good look at the grand prize so he starts thinking to himself that the girl next door is actually pretty cute. Of course, Shin is unable to stare away from Juwon's bakery as her dad is apparently a baker, because Juwon got that nice set of buns. It's so nice that he almost fell over from being hypnotized by the glazed buns, luckily, Juwon saves the day with her finally ready to continue the test. But the turntables turn as she instantly pulls off his leg armor exposing the battering ram hidden behind, so even I got startled with what she just did. It then turns out that Juwon is actually the Sigma male in this supposed relationship, as the exam is to make sure he's able to get his volcano up and running to become Mount Vesuvius. I never knew there was such a thing as a banana tree plantation examination, but in this anime world, Doc Pinky is about to throw Shin's world upside down. As such, she orders him to relax as she needs to make sure everything is fine and dandy or else there's going to be a huge problem with the side effects of the meds. Shortly after, she begins by applying some kind of weird gel to the Minecraft nether and then she whipped out some kind of advanced contraption that automatically shakes. 
Clearly, the machine is not meant for shaking milkshakes, rather it's meant to be intense enough to allow the banana tree to mature to its full potential without her having to do it herself manually. With Juwan feeling a little bit awkward due to the two being the same age, she decides to look away while the machine does its thing, but Shin is trying trying to hold on to his dear life not wanting to erupt. After checking the screen to her left, she realizes that there's actually nothing wrong so far so she starts thinking something worse could be happening to our boy. As such, she asks Shin if he can even feel her hands right now on the battering ram, but he's dumbfounded by the question as what kind of man would not feel the grip of a gorilla. As he struggles, a light bulb appears on top of his head as he realizes he could actually take advantage of the situation. And so he does, telling Juwan that he actually can't feel anything, just like my thighs when I sit on the toilet for far too long. Now super worried that Shin can't feel anything, she tries even harder to find spots that will allow him to feel her full force, so she starts searching deep down in the dark. And by dark, I mean the battering ram as Shin the genius is trying his hardest to endure the constant attacks from Juwan. Suddenly, Juwan gets startled by Shin as he starts erupting like a volcano with lava spurting everywhere, with no lid on top. It was at this very moment he realized he screwed up, as this is now part of his most embarrassing timeline, but at least he could say it was worth it all. Shin basically risked his jingle just so he could feel the dingle and it wasn't even Christmas yet. Anyways, moments later, Juwon leaves the room as she's super satisfied that nothing is actually wrong with Shin. So she leaves him behind ready to take care of the next person in line. After experiencing the explosion, Shin gets up and through the help of the post-banana tree sage like Clarity, he realizes that with Hong, he knew instantly what part he had to match since it glowed on her as well. So now it finally dawned on our sussy Baka what he needs to do to complete his mission and one of requirements is him to stop getting distracted. Elsewhere, Juwan is busy trying to find more spare clothes in her office, but her attempts are futile, as she's totally out. But the crazy thing is that she didn't care she had expired milk splatter on her face. Nevertheless, as she swaps into her night shift clothes, we finally discover that the mysterious glowing spot is actually located on her double twin dragons. However, as she's busy swapping armors for the upcoming shift, she gets ganked by a mysterious man in her office calling her name. The mysterious man is revealed to be none other than Soy Boy Master 9000 Shin, as he's busy telling her that his machine has stopped working and gone limp like some sami noodles. He then continues on by gaslighting her, telling her that it's actually her fault so she needs to take responsibility to make sure his machine is up and running again. As such, she agrees with his controversial take with no hesitation at all, so she asks if there's anything she can do to help. Then, out of nowhere, Shin actually had the gall to whip out the battering ram and tells Juwan that it's time for the siege of her walls. Now, instead of heading straight towards her inner walls, he actually decides to not penetrate the walls with his battering ram as he does not want to be cancelled like Balenciaga. In the end, Juwan actually goes through the entire siege as planned, but Shin the transformed demon erupted the volcano once again. With lava now spilling on top of her shoes, Juwan turns around and asks if everything now feels alright, wondering if that took care of everything our boy needed. However, it turns out that Shin is not finished yet, as he asks her it's okay for him to have one final action, as he still needs to envelope the legendary twin dragons. Upon Shin reaching out to complete his final task, Juwan suddenly finds herself laying at home, wondering to herself if everything was actually just a dream. With her still sweating from the crazy encounter, she quickly gets up from bed and logs on YouTube to make sure Dream from Minecraft was still around. Meanwhile, Shin is busy walking around the clinic feeling more stressed out as he figured out the glowing matching area is a forbidden place he would never force his way into. Shin needs to figure out how to release the energy from them ASAP as he does not want to continue living life like Sneeko the Soy Boy. Meanwhile, Juwon wonders the walls flustered as she tries her best to figure out who the heck was the mysterious man in her dream that just barged in and activated his rocket's full throttle to send her flying into space. However, due to the intensity of the dream, the only thing she can remember is his devious smile and the same uniform that everyone wears at her work. Suddenly, our boy is able to intercept the humble bearer of the Pyramids of Giza, asking Juwon if she's on the way to work. Without answering his question, she instantly places her hand on his face in an attempt to see if he could be the culprit from within her dreams. She then sighs and begins to shake her head as she must be mistaken, although his smile and uniform are an exact match with the man from her dream, but Shin apparently looks too much like a loser to be one. With Juwan acting all out of character, her weird reactions leave our boy hanging, causing Shin to be furiously curious to what the heck she's doing as she won't reveal the reasons behind her actions, so he accidentally squishes to check the basket down below. He then urges her to spill the tea, but as the two walk away, a person catches him sneaking a look from behind with his swish, alerting the passerby of his sussy actions. 
With him being caught in plain sight, the girl freezes and gets baffled that he had the gall to pull such a direct move on Doc Juan. As such, she takes it upon herself like a snitch to make sure justice is served, but the Justice League is a tier below the Avengers. She then reveals to Juan that she saw Shin staring endlessly at the bakery buns on display, looking as if he really wanted to grab them fresh off the oven. Furthermore, she continues on by whispering to her the fact that Shin is dubbed the crazy machine within the area as he got caught pulling a fast one with Hong in a restricted bathroom. So with the advent of all the new information about Shin, Juwon gets shocked as she never expected him to be that type. It also then dawns on her that maybe her dream was actually just some kind of warning to alert her to avoid Shin at all costs, or else the prophecy of the suspect machine will come true with everything accumulating to her experiencing his oil spill. With Shen now painted in a different, unflattering light by accident, Juwon's work buddy tries her best to convince her to make sure Shen goes home early to avoid any mishaps. Her pleading is heard loud and clear as Anna completes her mission successfully so Juwon is all fired up and wanting to make sure he gets sent home today. Fast forward literally like three minutes later, Juwon barges into his room and orders Shen to go home urgently, while also insulting him by calling him names. Shen then freezes and begins to sweat profusely due to her abrupt confrontation with him as he begins to yell in his own headspace, claiming that everything is just a terrible misunderstanding as he ain't even a demon king. He then starts freaking out, so he starts channeling his inner Karen self and begins to yell that everything she's heard is false, and they can't even be possible as our boy reveals how down bad he is as he claims he hasn't even spoken to seven different girls in his entire life. Now that's something we keep to ourselves, buddy, so make sure to take note, guys, and don't reveal things like that out loud. Anyway, since Juwan is ultimately a kind soul, she gives him another chance, but the catch is that she needs to record everything he does to make sure he isn't a supreme sussibaka. However, out of nowhere, the two get interrupted in their debacle as a man walks in backwards, shouting for everyone to get back whilst he holds on to someone in front of him. It's then revealed that the guy is actually mentally crazy, as he screams he needs and wants a spaceship ASAP delivered to him so he can escape this lowly planet. Juwon then attempts to quickly interfere, but the guy has no idea that there's two people behind him, so Shin is forced to stop her in her tracks to make sure the man doesn't get startled. As Shin stops her from attempting any foolish moves, they accidentally checkmate each other by accidentally falling underneath the bed. With the two being distracted by the crazy man in the room, Juwon falls on top of Shin, causing his hands to move on his own. Now the number one rule in regards to ancient pyramids is to never disturb the peace and to leave it untouched, however, Shin has done the opposite today. So now he's the one that ultimately gets flustered, but he refuses to move over instantly, causing Juwon to finally realize what the heck is happening. She then looks down in disbelief at Shin, but we can't really fault our boy as it's basically like clouds falling on top of him. Regardless, Juwon decides to instinctively whip out her phone and record the disturbance, and begins to yell at him claiming that Shin was not able to help himself. So now bro is actually caught in 4K, but Shin is a savage because he still does not move an inch, Instead, he hangs on the twin pyramids like his life depends on it. Shin then perseveres and pushes through, telling himself that this is his only chance at reclaiming his destiny, so he decides to risk it all in hopes for the best as he still has Roblox at home waiting for him if all else fails. However, the turntables turn as he quickly switches away from his plan and proceeds to ask Juwon what the plan is to take down the crazy man. Juwon then reveals that her plan is to actually just stick the defensive weapon she keeps with her at all times in his back, so that should quickly do the trick. As such, Shin puts on a brave act and tells her to get ready to zap the man when he successfully distracts him. Right before Shin initiates his plan of being the bait, Juwon tells him that if this is his attempt to change the subject, then it won't work. But then Shin chads up and tells her she can call the Po-Po, or they can actually try to save the person right now and after that. She can toss him out, but first they need to save her. He continues on his act of bravery by ordering her to make sure she doesn't miss her shot, as he still has a lot left to live for. Shortly after, Shin pops out from underneath the bed like a ninja, trying his best to calm down the man and to distract him. Now that our boy has his attention, his plan is to slowly back away and move into a corner opposite of where Juwon will pop out to give her the best chance at succeeding. But then Juwon ruins the entire plan by popping out right after him, and she ends up yelling at the man to stop wanting to make a deal with him. We then discover that the true brave one is Juwon, and she offers to swap place with Terry and to take her instead, claiming that she's more valuable because she's the head honcho of the area. However, she falls frantically to the ground as she realizes that her taser is missing from her pocket, so it's totally obvious that she put all her knowledge points in gaining her degree. Anyways, the man decides he's had enough with all the shenanigans going on, so he starts yelling and ends up charging straight towards Juwon. Unfortunately, 
Her reaction time is slower than an iron player, so she just watches and stands there doing nothing, but our hero yells at her to move. With her still frozen looking like she has to keep in a major fart, Shin musters up some of his powers and instantly dodge rolls towards Juwon in an attempt to save her. Now our boy must be super lucky as Juwon accidentally turns when he dodge rolls into her, causing Shin's hand to land on the twin pyramids of Giza, causing a blinding light to erupt inside the room. It was at this moment he actually risked it all and it worked, as he ends up rolling a 99 out of 100 on his lucky scale. Now if you guys actually think about it, Shin's mom is actually the best wingman of all time as she knew one day her own son will come to reclaim every single ounce of his lost energy. So now Shin has made contact with the powers coming from Hong and Juwan, causing two full panels to bright up at his home shrine. Meanwhile, back in the action, Shin actually ends up taking a direct blow from the crazy man causing him to actually get injured. However, the man stops attacking and begins staring into the sky, busy wondering what the heck he's feeling after the bright flash of energy. He then continues on by talking about how he feels like he has ascended and gone beyond the depths of the solar system, so it's basically like he's stunned and concussed. With the man stuck in a dreamlike state, Juwan swiftly gets up to zap the hell out of the man as it's time for revenge and to end everything once and for all. Juwan then successfully brings down the man as he instantly drops to the floor like some kind of fruit fly. Eventually, she realizes that Shin is actually losing some blood due to the man's attack right before he made contact with her powers, so she instantly goes to him to see if he's okay. She then orders him to show her his arm as she needs to make sure the man did not accidentally destroy any major parts. Upon further inspection, she realizes it wasn't just a small boo-boo, so she starts ushering him into her office as she needs to begin helping him heal. As she helps clean up his injury, he ends up realizing that Juwon is being sussy with his arm and is more hands-on than usual. It then turns out that Juwon is surprised at herself as it seems like her body is involuntarily moving by itself, as if it has its own separate mind. She then starts shaking as she attempts to hurry up and finish disinfecting him, as she discovers some kind of heat wave pulsing through her veins. And so she accidentally squeezes too hard when applying a bandage, causing Shin to scream like a little girl, so he asks her if she could slow down a bit. But she apologizes and continues on moving like the Flash, telling him that she can't really stop as she's now in a bit of a rush due to what she's now experiencing. In the end, she succumbs to the heat pulsing through her so she stops in her tracks and proceeds to close the curtains around them. As she forcefully closes the curtain, Shin gets scared with the sudden change of her demeanor, so he starts apologizing for whining like a big old baby. Suddenly, the sussy nation appeared and started attacking straight through Juwan. In the end, the super nice and caring Juwan has transformed into a demon that cannot be reckoned with as she starts displaying the power coursing through her veins. In just mere seconds, Shin is forced to try his best to make sure his brand new machine will not be spilling in less than one minute due to Juwan's unrelenting attacks. In the end, she decides to remove her armor so they could proceed with Shin's siege straight into the cave of Juwan, as our boy has now unlocked a new achievement.